James here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your families, and welcome to another film breakdown. This week, we'll take a look at Florida's defense versus Vanderbilt. It wasn't pretty. A lot of things to look at. As always, if you like the content, like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon, and check out the podcast each and every Monday where we bring you in-depth analysis of the Florida Gators. As we do each week, we'll look through the film chronologically, starting with the beginning of the game and then going until the end, taking a look at what Vanderbilt's offense was doing, how Florida countered, and then how things went on throughout the game, what adjustments were made by both sides. Early on, it was clear that Vanderbilt wanted to use tempo against Florida, something they saw Arkansas do with a lot of success, and that they definitely wanted to target certain players. Early on and throughout the game, they wanted to target Brad Stewart. Of course, it's generally always wise to attack any of Florida's star players since we've struggled at that position rather consistently. On this play, although you can't see it, Vanderbilt does have a wide receiver at the bottom of the screen along with Elam covering. Florida's going to wind up being in a cover six. In a cover six, Vanderbilt's going to motion the tight end across the formation. Diabate going to follow. So it could be man, could not be man. But as you can see, Florida's corner get depth here. This is going to be a cover two on this side. Ball's not going there, so don't worry about that too much. And what's going to be a cover four on this side. So we're going to have a safety, safety here in Sean Davis. And then Brad Stewart is going to be your dropper with Elam here playing man. So cover six with three safeties is what it's going to wind up being. Brad Stewart on this play is going to get turned around and Florida's defensive line is going to lose contain. So look here on the bottom part of your screen. And you're going to see Diabate get a nice contact push off here. So shove this route outside, which is what he does. We're going to get an escape in the pocket from Seals. And you're not going to see what happens on your screen. But Brad Stewart, and we're going to diagram this right here. So this is Diabate. Here's the receiver. Diabate gives him a shove. And Stewart's right here. Stewart's bailing. Stewart, upon seeing the shove, is facing this way. He then looks like the receiver is going to go outside of him, so he begins to open up in order to turn himself around this direction. Receiver then runs in front of him here, in which case he then turns all the way around, locating the receiver, which allows the receiver to settle into his zone window for an easy throw. There was really no reason for Brad Stewart to make any of these turns, and I wish I could show you on the All-22 exactly what happens. Again, although Seals does get out, does get out of the pocket, and escapes. Uh, everyone else was covered. In fact, this would have been just fine as Diabate would have been able to come downhill and make the tackle here had Brad Stewart not lost him, but he winds up turning himself all the way around. Uh, Vanderbilt's tight end is not exactly a fleet of foot guy, not a difficult cover. Again, no reason to have this happen on this play. You're not going to be able to see any of this, unfortunately, but here is Diabate. He has already passed him off. He's going to come down here and now help in case Seals wants to run. And then what you'll see is the end of the play, which is this target window here that we mentioned, because Brad Stewart had basically faced this way, then pivoted around this way, then turned all the way around, when the receiver had simply just gotten pushed by Diabate and turned right here before then snapping back to there. So the defensive call on this play was perfectly fine. Florida should have, in fact, been here and covering this one. They got the matchup they wanted. They attacked, again, Brad Stewart right from the gate. And let's take a look at Ken Seals. Just look at Seals' eyes here right from the beginning. He takes the snap and immediately is going to look for who he wants to throw the ball to. Here it is. Right away, he's reading this portion of the field. He sees there's safety over the top, so he knows that's dead. And then he's going to come right down here to his matchup there. But the entire time, he's going to wind up attacking that window. And you're going to see that throughout this film study. Uh, Brad Stewart was someone they definitely had decided going into the game that week they wanted to attack. It's hard to understand how we're this far into the season and Florida continues to struggle lining up. Of course, if you've listened to the podcast uh, for any amount of time, you know that we think this is squarely on the coaches. After the game, there were some interesting comments by Elam as well about getting the play call in on time. It's just not getting done on time. But lo and behold, uh, at this stage of the season, there is no excuse for this. And again, to me, this is not on the players. Uh, if you're not getting the play call from the sideline in time, that's on the coaches, that's on game prep. And also just Florida's execution uh, is consistently poor. And that's what you're going to see on this film. The film never lies. And so here we are, first and 10. This is a high-level SEC game against an opponent that's 0-6. And this is what you're going to see from Florida. We have Sean Davis looking at Steiner. Steiner 
not looking at all. He's not even looking. So there's a communication problem right there. They're not looking. Now we have Brad Stewart who just got here. Meanwhile, we have three on, I don't know what you want to call this, one and a half. Because we've got a couple guys over here. I'm not really sure. Ball snapped. Sean Davis still trying to figure out what's going on between him and Steiner. This pass is going to come out here. Now, despite all of this being terrible, Brad Stewart should have already been contacting the blocker. Notice how the blocker is just waiting for him. We're locked up here. Now, the only guy that can make the tackle, of course, is Sean Davis. Sean Davis now is way too far inside because he was too busy trying to talk to Steiner. Regardless, he still should make this tackle, but he's not because he's essentially not ready. And look, that's a big deal in football. You miss tackles when you're not ready. A good, sound football team is already lined up. Right now, they're already lined up. That means we got Brad Stewart here. Sean Davis is going to wind up being high here. You can play this in a variety of ways. We've talked a lot about whether you want to have what I prefer is having the middle and a bunch set of three, having the middle covered up close. You can pull both these guys off. I prefer that in general for several reasons, but you could mix this up and you could do this in different ways. Regardless, however you want to defend this, you can't have this stuff going on consistently throughout every single football game all year long. Vanderbilt just simply went tempo and lined up like this. This is an absolutely standard three receiver or trip set to the left. There is nothing special about this. This is a heavy, strong side play. This is inexcusable. And because of that, again, because of that, even though Sean Davis gets there, he's just not ready for the play. He's not prepared. He's not thinking. He's not engaged. Now he's just reacting. He's late. He misses a tackle. And a play that really should have gone nowhere goes for a simple eight or nine yards. We've also talked about this on previous film reviews. It's third down and one for Vanderbilt. And we've mentioned that Florida should put more players on the line of scrimmage to commit to stopping play more aggressive, commit to actually attempting to stop these third and shorts or plays where it's obvious the team may want to be conservative and go safe. Of course, we told you into the lead up to Vanderbilt that Seals is in fact a gunslinger. He will throw deep. They like to do that. Well, go ahead and make them do it, right? Make them do it. Instead, Florida is going to play extremely conservative on this early game third and one by leaving four guys off the line of scrimmage, making it nearly impossible for them to stop what Vanderbilt's about to do, or take a heroic effort for the defensive line to stop this. There's just not enough bodies on the line of scrimmage. You cannot count on five guys on the line to take on seven and win that battle enough times. You're allowing, I mean, just look at the movement here from Florida's, what are de facto linebackers now, whether they're safeties or linebackers here is irrelevant. They're all playing the role of linebacker. There's just no possible way to stop this. You're not going to be able to win at the line of scrimmage which Florida doesn't, and instead you have a gaping hole. And in fact, if Cox does not make this tackle, this could be a touchdown. Just doesn't make any sense. Again, why Florida continues to play so just inexplicably conservative and soft at random times uh, when, when they are the superior team with superior talent on film makes no sense. There's way too much respect here being given early on. Um, just There's just no way to sugarcoat it. It's not sound, and it's not good. And again, this is a mentality. This is what you're telling your team. You're telling your team on third and one, I don't trust you against Vanderbilt to come up in here and be aggressive on the line and trust our matchups here and leave a single high safety and put these guys in here and play aggressive. I don't trust you guys to play that way, so we're going to play soft like this, and we're going to wait until they take the first down. Don't get it. Not a good play. Vanderbilt converts easily, picking up four or five yards. Florida's going to drop into a cover four, a cover four, nickel blitz. So we're going to send our nickel here. He's already telegraphing this pre-snap. Now, of course, he could he could fake this and come back this way. But if you're Seals, you already like your matchup over here. You've got soft, soft. That's a pre-snap read cover four. Confirm with soft and soft. So right away, your pre-snap read is, in fact, they're playing cover four. Of course, I do like this. I have no problem with this here, which we just talked about earlier. This is Cox over here. A little weird, a little unorthodox, but there's Cox. Vanderbilt in five wide. In five wide, there's all sorts of things Florida can do. They can drop eight and cover eight. They can send an extra pressure man. They could send the linebacker here. Uh, they can send the nickel. Now, we know from previous film sessions that Grantham loves to send corner, nickel blitzes, all sorts of blitzes off the edge. Problem with this in modern-day football is good quarterbacks are taught to pick this up. They're taught to read this. And if they're going to read it, then you're going to wind up having a nice little route combination where this is going to be an easy throw. And that's exactly what happens here on second down and six. Takes a snap. 
immediately checks to his left. We're trying to send Ventral Miller all the way across the formation at the same point in time we send a C gap or outside blitz off the perimeter. There it is. And this is just too easy. Cover four droppers out of the way. There's no way Ventrell's can get to that corner in time. This is such an easy completion. There it is on time. First down. Again, this is just too easy. This is too easy. One more time. Why bring this? I don't know. Why bring this pressure here like this? I really don't know, especially when you're going to sit into a soft cover four. There it is. This is just not trusting your athletes. What are we afraid of here? What are we worried about? If you're going to bring an edge nickel pressure, when you know that this left tackle cannot block two guys, why not walk up here and, and challenge your guys to play good defense? Challenge your guys not to get beat deep immediately. Don't give them this stuff. We do it. First down Vanderbilt. What I'm sure is going to be a weekly occurrence for the rest of the season is our friend the slant route. When Florida has any defender that's going to wind up playing the slot receiver, basically just bailing and covering nothing. Essentially, the play is just don't cover anything. Let's just not get beat deep and cover nothing in the process. The purpose of that, you and I can't know. But a slant route is a hugely important element of modern football, and we don't seem to really care about stopping it. So here it is. Let's go ahead and run this play fake to suck the linebackers up, which in this case doesn't matter because there is no linebacker in this window. But assuming he was, that's why you're going to wind up running that handoff fake there. Give yourself a nice huge window, and let's just look at that. Look at this. What 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 is what kind of defense is this? That's no defense. These guys are spectators. They might as well sit in the stands and put their feet up and eat some popcorn because they're not playing defense. They're not even playing the game. I mean, let's go back to pre-snap Sean Davis here. Sean Davis, eight-yard cushion, and also a backpedal immediately. Now, you've heard us cover before if you've seen previous film studies. If you're going to play off technique, you need to watch to see if you're going to get a quick game route. And if you get a quick game route, you got to come downhill on the quick game route. So right now, Sean Davis doesn't need to backpedal. Maybe he takes a tiny little rocker step backwards, but he's not backpedaling. And if instead, take a look at where he turns his head for the slant. Look at the mark and look at where he turns his head for the slant. Sean Davis would be right here on this yard line. And if he was, as soon as he snaps his head for the slant, Sean Davis is here breaking to the ball. Right? But instead, look, he's not even on your screen. You can't even see him. This is not defense. Sean Davis has been a dependable player for Florida. Now, I'm not sure why he's being taught this technique or what the plan of action is here, but it's first down and 10. And giving teams easy slant route first downs for 11 yards is not a recipe for success. Again, Sean Davis is not just doing this on his own. He's not going rogue and saying, I'm just going to play defense 10 yards off because I feel like it. Clearly, this is what's happening in practice. This is something that we feel comfortable doing. And there is no easier throw in football than that. Every single quarterback in America wants to make that throw every time. One of the beauties about doing these film breakdowns is that over time you're going to see the same things again and again. Football, although a very complicated chess match, does have a lot of commonalities to what sound defense and sound offense looks like. Gap control, of course, being at the forefront. So if we know that they may run a zone read, you should already know that the unblocked defensive end's job is to hold the edge. Now, sometimes you may assign your defensive end to just take out the running back, in which case he would have help. So if we said defensive end, your job is to take the running back no matter what happens, we may rotate a linebacker into that gap or a safety. That's not what's going to happen on this play, but just keep in mind that it's not always that they're going to wind up holding the edge, but that is the default way to defend this. On this particular play, Florida is not going to do that. We're going to go full send. We're going full send for the running back here, and we are going to get very, very lucky. In the bottom of our screen, Vanderbilt's going to be blocking here. Take a look at the action here. The miracle that occurs is Vanderbilt actually has a tight end coming across the formation. And since Seals correctly chooses to keep it, this tight end block here sends Chatfield right into seals now the reason why i'm highlighting this particular play although it's simple is florida completely eats this play fake we're all going this way we're blocks down here take a look again we're all this way if this block does not get thrown this way seals comes out of here and most certainly has a big game again he's a capable runner imagine that he's not blocked that you just let him go across the formation there's nobody here could be a touchdown most certainly is a big play. 
Cox has gotten much better with his gap control, and the D-line in general played actually a very good game, as we're going to see. So we're not going to harp too much on the D-line. That unit, led by David Turner, has played well, and it gets better every single game on film. This is just another opportunity to coach this up in the film room and say, look, you've got to do your job first. Don't be a hero. Do your job. Hold the edge. Now, you made the tackle here, but don't reward yourself because the only reason you made this tackle is because you got bumpered right into it. Right? Look at this. You got hit into it. Be thankful. We'll take that. It's Thanksgiving week. We're very happy about that. We'll take that tackle for loss. But know that next week, you need to make sure you stay at home, especially against a Kentucky team that's going to use all sorts of zone reads and backfield fakes to running backs. Stay at home. Stay in your gap. Eliminate these plays from ever even being possible because that one could have been a touchdown. On the Vanderbilt prep video, we said that Vanderbilt's favorite formation was two by two, two receivers, two by two, one running back. They're lined up here in the red zone. And what do you see from Florida's defense? Something you saw when you watched the game live. I'm sure you were frustrated. A lot of you were messaging me. You see a lot of pointing, a lot of pointing. Why are we pointing? Because this is a receiver and this is a tight end. This is the matchup we want our linebacker on. This is the player we want Elam on. It's taking us quite a long time to figure this out. Of course, over here on this side of the field, we're fine. And the D-line's ready. Back end, not ready. Ball's going to get snapped. Elam is not there. Elam is not here. Take a look. He's not here. He's now lined up on the outside. That's going to be a huge no-no. Why is that a huge no-no? Take a look at where Steiner's dropping. Again, no offense to Steiner, but this guy should not be playing for Florida based upon what he's put on film. This will not be his fault. So for Steiner, you're going to get a pass on this one. But Florida is going to drop into a cover two. Where is the weakness in a cover two? Right in the middle of the field. Where is Seals looking already? He's looking over here. Why? Because he saw the confusion just like you did. And he thought, hey, that's a good chance they're not going to get ready in time. On top of this, Cox has jumped off sides. So now it's a free play. So now Seals is going to take his chance. He knows what he's got. At this point in time, he knows he has cover two. He knows he's running a post route into the window of cover two. He's going to let this ball fly since it is a free play. Elam has the wrong leverage. Elam is supposed to be funneling this. There's no doubt Elam, which he said as much in the postgame conference, is supposed to have inside leverage to making sure he funnels any of these routes to his safety, who is over here. He has outside leverage. He's funneling the receiver to a spot where there is no one. This is a free play. It's third down and eight. It's a touchdown. Now, Elam, because he's a very talented guy, makes up this space and almost separates the receiver from the ball. But regardless, third down and eight, we jump off sides in the hard count, which Seals obviously has a good one. We jumped off sides twice in this game. Jumped off sides, weren't ready, wrong leverage, wrong play. Again, this is not the first game of the season or maybe even the second game of the season. We're this far into the season. Vanderbilt did nothing confusing. Vanderbilt just came out and lined up. Lined up. Tight end, wide receiver, and we're not ready. And we're confused. And we give up a touchdown. Again, this stuff can't be happening, but it is. And you're going to see it all throughout this game. And obviously, it's frustrating for me doing film breakdowns. You know, my job is to remain as unbiased as possible, which I am. Uh, as a Florida fan and as an analyst, this is what this is. Right, We have to look at this for what this is. This is poorly executed defense. Unorganized, chaotic, not ready defense on the first drive of a game. I don't care if it's 11 a.m. or 5 a.m. Your players have to be able to get lined up if they want to be successful. Gap control, get lined up, get your numbers right. As we've said time and time again, that's more than half the battle in college football. If you do those things and you are the more talented team, just by default, you're going to be successful. But here's Florida again on this first drive, unable to do even the most basic of important things on defense. All right, stop me if you've seen this play before. Vanderbilt's going to run a slant. This is Brad Stewart, someone we mentioned they targeted. We're going to get the same backfield play fake we saw before. There's your play fake. Let's move these linebackers, which it does to create a bigger window for our slant route, which is the route that we want to throw. There it is. And again. Brad Stewart is in no place to make a play on this ball. Now, you can play off man. There's nothing wrong with playing off your man or off in zone. It can certainly be done. But if you do it, Brad Stewart wants to be about ready to contact this receiver so that this pass is incomplete. Instead, this ball is going to get there. He's going to catch it. He still has it. Now he's moving, and then he contacts him. 
This is just way too late. Again, it's first down and 10, and we're content to let Vanderbilt get seven or eight yards throwing slant routes. That's just far too easy. Again, a slant route is a staple of the modern game. You would absolutely much rather, much rather make this be an out route. A flick at this. He's on the near side here, right? Near hash. This is a very, very long throw to throw an out route. Very few quarterbacks want to throw that route. It's also very dangerous. It's much easier to run zone concepts on this side of the field if you're gonna if you're gonna do that. Do not allow them to make the throw they want to make, which is this easy window throw here. But Florida, time and time again, is going to oblige them and allow them to make these easy completions week in and week out. Seven to seven, third down and two. Another crucial chance for Florida to get off the field. What do we see? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Here comes Sean Davis. No one knows what's happening. Where are they all looking? They're looking here. They're looking there. They're looking at the play callers. What is the play? It's third down and two. Who are we covering? What's the play? What am I supposed to do? We don't know what we're doing. No one knows. Now we know. Now we got the signal. Okay, I'm coming over here. Here I come. Ball snapped. A little too late for that. Not going to get there in time. A couple of terrible tackles. 10-yard gain. Okay, here comes Marco Wilson. Again, Marco Wilson is over here. They can't run this play. Something else has to happen. Here he is. He's there. He gets blocked, so he can't make that tackle. And then Elam, not sure what kind of tackle this is. Close your eyes. Put your head down. Hard to tackle something you can't see. This is not where the player is. That's not where the Vanderbilt receiver is. You can't tackle your own shoe. Keep your head up, tackle him, wrap him up. We're not picking on anyone in this film study. Elam is an excellent player. But again, on film, if I'm in the film room and I'm working with Elam right now, Elam, head up. I want your eyes on this guy the entire time. I want you to be looking at his waist. Look at his waist. You focus in here. Look at his waist. Look at his waist. Look at his waist. Keep your head up. Where are you looking? Look at his waist. Drive down, make a tackle. Not what's happening, right? These are technique talks in the film room. These are easy stops, basic plays. We're not ready. Now look, a lot of this, again, is what's happening in the pre. Instead of Elam getting his mind right for the play, thinking, okay, I'm two by two. It's third down and two. What kind of routes does he like to run? What have I seen on film? He's worried about what the play call is, and he's not ready. Look, he's not ready. Now he looks. He's just not ready for the play. So the reason a lot of these bad tackles are occurring is we're not ready for play. We're not mentally ready for the snap. And that's what you see happen here. I mean, look how far away we are. We're lucky this isn't more, right? Easy, easy yards. And that's a reason why you heard on the broadcast, the announcers say that Derek Mason put the film on, showed his team, and said, this is a team that we can move the ball on. I want you to watch the film and believe it. And there's no doubt that's true. As we say on the podcast, each and every week, this unit is a bad, bad unit. And I can assure you, for the most part, it's not because of talent. Although this is not an all-NFL-laden, talented defense, it's plenty talented enough to be much more sound than it is week in and week out. And there's no reason why any coach should be able to put the film on and say, this is a team that we're really, really excited about playing. This is a unit we can't wait to attack. That just should not be true. And yet, unfortunately, it is. Second down and five, we mentioned that Vanderbilt likes to use play action to take shots down the field. You get a route, which is a really skinny post here, basically an inside go. And then you're going to have a dig route coming across the field here. You're not going to see this on your screen, but Marco Wilson is going to play excellent defense on this one. He's going to make contact, and again, you can't see him. He's off your screen, but he's going to make contact, top of the screen, on the dig route. He's got great position. He's on top of the route. On top of the route, right here, again, he made contact on the top of the route, which was excellent. A lot of them have to stay on top. He's in excellent position to make a play on the ball. Even if this ball is thrown well, he's going to make contact right on it. The reason Marco's here is this ball is actually thrown very poorly. And again, it's fuzzing the screen, so you can't tell. Very poorly thrown ball. But Marco Wilson was basically running the route with him there. So this is a good example of good defense. The defensive line, which is actually having a really good game, even from the beginning of the game, they showed up right at the gate, was getting quick, immediate pressure almost every play. And Slayton right here, as he often does, when you when he gets one-on-one -on -one opportunities, he wins. He wins there and he creates this bad throw. 
Again, look, one-on-one -on -one for Slayton, blows him up, gets in there, gets to the quarterback, forces a bad throw. It's a good play by Florida's defense there. Good coverage across the board. Nobody open, quick pressure, good stop, ready for play. It's nice to see that. We don't get a lot of it. When we do, certainly, we'll highlight it. Grantham loves to run corner blitzes. I myself generally don't. Uh, especially, again, corner blitzes to me work really well if teams are going to wind up using play action, if they're going to wind up using long developing plays, if they're going to be under center running seven-step drops or in shotgun attempting to hit, again, uh, deep routes, double moves, things of that nature. The corner blitz just takes too long to get there, and you're taking a player off the board that only has half the field they can get to, which is what Florida's going to do. I'd much rather see Florida rotate safeties down into the box and set up as a third linebacker, essentially, while then running a cover one. I think it's a lot more sound. I think it's a lot easier, and I think it's a lot more effective. I haven't shown you any of these yet, but they've already happened in the game on a couple of occasions, but we are going to bring a corner blitz in here. Again, whether this is run support or not, it doesn't really matter. Here he comes, and you're just a wasted player. He's wasted, right? He's just a wasted player. He's going to wind up squeezing out there for the first down. Elam is not going to touch anyone or do anything. I only highlight this because this has been plaguing Florida for other reasons. But again, Elam can't make this play, even though the play is an inside run more to his side of the field. He's not getting there. If it goes this way, he's definitely not getting there. And, and there's reasons to do this. Like we've said before, there's reasons the defensive play card that you might use plays like these. So you can't always jump on the play callers for getting it wrong. But time and time again on film each week, it's sort of like we're just going to run these for no rhyme or reason. No rhyme or reason. Now you might say to yourself, the reason I want to run this is we have two players versus their two. It's a weak side run. Our linebacker is shaded over the ball versus being shaded over here. Vanderbilt and other teams do like to run weak side when they have this. They'll pull across the field and they'll attempt to put numbers on their side numbers on their side look you see this action happening here let's bring our corner have our safety pick up the receiver but i would just assume say forget all that let's not get that cute let's just bring him into the box forget all this nonsense rotate him here and then we're good right let's trust our defense and if we don't like one of these matchups over here shade the safety there and lock up here much more sound much better you can plug your gaps more easily and you are not risking a bad fill from this side where now you get the running back one-on-one -on -one with your safety, who's well off the line of scrimmage. Now you're not going to see any of this play on your screen until the end, which is really a shame. You have Marco Wilson man-to-man -man, on the top of your screen. He's going to get an outside release to go route to where Marco is going to cross body jam. Cross body, again, he's going to take his left arm. He's going to place it. He's going to place it to the right arm or mid-chest area of the receiver which is effectively going to allow Marco to stay on top of this route as they turn up the sideline. He's going to be perfectly covering this route. Excellent technique from Mark Wilson from start to finish, from Marco rather. There's ball. He's here. This is interception. Look, he's perfect. Marco is running this route for him. He's in better position. Marco just having a tough season is going to play this ball late. He's going to play it passive. And the Vanderbilt player is going to wind up winning this over him. Uh, regardless, excellent technique from Marco. Again, if I'm watching the film with Marco, it's Marco. you got to get the ball. Right now, you're a receiver. You need to alpha this man and get this ball. Don't let him be the first to get it to you. Be more aggressive than this. Box him out. Create some space. Get physical and high point that thing. Get up there and get that thing. That's your ball, not his. Go get it. Get up there. This is too passive. Right? This is a player who's hungry for the ball. Marco, he must have eaten earlier. He's not that hungry. He's indifferent towards it. He's going to hope it comes all the way to him. You got to be hungry for this. You got to want this more. Florida's defense needs to have much more of an edge than what they have. It's going to be hard to win a game against a marquee opponent if we're not hungry enough for it. You did a great job. You're in position. Here's your moment. You work hard all week for this moment. Go get that ball. When Florida does have the numbers right and they're lined up correctly, they're capable of playing very good defense. That's one of the reasons why it is frustrating breaking it down on film. Also, one of the reasons why it could be, could be if we continue the way they're going, is such a waste on the defensive side of the ball. This is not a situation where we're hopeless. It's a situation where if we could get things cleaned up 
And again, I'm not hopeful that's going to happen with with the current staff in place, with the data we have on them being here in year three. But if we could, this is a defense that is capable of turning things around. Again, when the numbers are good, and we're in good position here, third down and four, third down and four. Okay, so we're going to have five guys on the line, which is perfectly fine. Vanderbilt countering here with six, seven right there. This is going to be who we talked about, number five coming in the game, a red zone quarterback, more of a runner than a thrower. We're in good position in case they attempt not to want to run this football. We've got our numbers correct. Here's our weak side. Here's our strong side. We're numbered up good. We are ready to go. What happens on this play is what you hope. Unblocked man comes in. It's going to force the pitch early, which is what you want. What they want to do is they want to get him over here before he has to pitch. We're going to blow that up, come right off the edge, come in early. Now we're going to have a linebacker filling here, flowing right to the running back. And Ventrell makes the tackle. So again, one more time. Bogle, who had a nice game, comes off the edge. There's Bogle. There's Miller flowing behind him. Here we go again. Let's take a look. Bogle on the edge, right? Bogle, Miller behind, pursuit, tackle. Vanderbilt here, again, really should have never called this play. They didn't have the numbers for this play. They just didn't have it. And you can see here, although they're blocking all their assigned guys, there's not enough of them to block here and here, right? Support play call by Vanderbilt, the numbers, but a good job by Florida to get the numbers right on this play to ensure that Vanderbilt could not run something I like to run, as we showed you on film leading into the game, uh, which is going to be a sprint out option, a quarterback keeper, anything of that nature. Florida with a nice job on this play, holding Vanderbilt to a field goal. Third down and nine, 10-7 Vandy, second quarter. Not the start Florida wants. Are we panicked yet as Florida fans? No. Are we frustrated? Of course. Of course. So what is Florida going to run? And we're going to lose the screen again, which is unfortunate. But Florida's going to wind up running a cover three, which means that Marco is responsible for a deep third. Deep third. Deep third. Now, one thing I do not understand watching Florida on film every single play this season is what we think deep third means. Deep third does not mean that you just have to bail for 25 yards and allow any pass that you want to be completed underneath you. Deep thirds mean you just need to make sure that no one gets deeper than you on the deep third. But you can read the field. You're in zone. You can play aggressive with what's happening on the play beneath you. So you're going to see Marco just bail. And you're going to lose him here. But Marco is just going to keep on bailing. And he's going to leave this, this route wide open. He is wide open sitting at the first down marker. We have Brad Stewart here. Of course, he's picking on Brad Stewart. Again, who does he want to attack? He wants to attack Brad Stewart. That's just easy film studying. Take a look at Florida. Who do you attack? Attack Marco Wilson, but primarily attack their nickel. Attack their star, right? Their star can't cover. Uh, so far on film, we've put no one out there that can cover. So let's attack them. Every single team is going to do it until we do something about it. He's going to run a hitch route. Very basic hitch route. Brad Stewart, late to get there. Easy completion. So again, Brad Stewart knows he has help over the top. He's in a cover three. He knows he has help in the middle, and he knows he has help on the edge. He should be very aggressive on this route. That's his job. It's also third down and nine. What are the most likely routes my receiver is going to run at this point in time? Where are you going, Brad Stewart? Where are we protecting against? What are we doing? We're trying to get off the field. This does not make any sense. Again, what are we defending against? I just don't know. Nice throw by Seals. He's got a good strong arm. Very good throw. But again, look at where Seals is looking. It's just like when we played Felipe Franks. You have to take away what these quarterbacks want to do first. I mean, he is just staring right here the entire time. Yep, got him. First down. Just far too easy. It would have been easy, even easier for him. Again, you can see Marco is here. Marco's receiver is down here wide open. Would have been even easier for him if he had actually read the field. But regardless, why are we just giving up first downs like this? What is happening? Again, I don't know. This is probably going to be the most frustrating broadcast or film study that I've done uh, because it's a culmination of, of a lot of this going on for a while against competent quarterbacks, and there is no good answer for it. Again, these videos are not burn videos to say, hey, these coaches are terrible, get rid of all of them. But it is, it is what it is, and it says what it says. And this is just not a well-coached football team, not technique-wise, not understanding-wise. 
Uh, when players struggle, you can see that when entire units struggle consistently and you can compare it to a unit that's not struggling like the defensive line, you can see glaring issues with Florida's defense. It's not getting better week in and week out. And the same guys that struggle, struggle week in and week out. And I'm sure, again, they're giving their best efforts. I have no doubt that all these guys we talk about are not trying their absolute hardest. That's a very important distinction when we watch these film reviews. Um, we're not jumping on anyone. I'm not jumping on anyone here. But the reality is, if you're trying to win a championship, hard decisions have to be made. You have to do what's best for the team. No matter who you may like more as a person, no matter how long they've been playing for the team, if you can play a player that potentially increases your ceiling and can help you win, you do it. And if you have a coach who's struggling to teach a concept, you better get in there and teach it yourself. And if you're the head coach and you need to make a change because things are not working correctly and you're struggling to get productivity out of your unit in your three, then you better figure out what to do. Because at this rate, this kind of defense is going to cost Florida a chance to win anything important this season. And you're not always going to get chances in the SEC to win something. So what is your goal? What are you trying to do as a team? What are you looking for? And how are you going to hold your team accountable for what they're putting on film? All right, it's first and 10. We know Vanderbilt's decided in their game plan they're going to attack Brad Stewart. Here's Brad Stewart here. They're going to give you a little slant and then a go route. One of the classic combinations in football. Florida's going to play man-to-man -man defense uh, with Sean Davis, who's going to wind up dropping down here in run support. So there is no safety help. Take a look here. They're going to fall off the screen. But we are going to be able to see this portion. There's Sean Davis. Again, he's primarily in run support here. So Brad Stewart knows he has no help over the top. He's going to get beat. There it is. It's a great pass. This is good coverage by Brad Stewart. This is fine. This is fine coverage, right? He's right here. I mean, look at this. His arm is right there. So we're not going to fault Brad for that. Brad, good play. You're there. You can't see this here. But on his technique... And again, something we've talked about a long time. And again, I wish I could show it to you. But his technique is what fails him right here. So Brad Stewart's a little bit off. He starts about five years off, which is fine. His actual off-man coverage here is really good. And when the receiver breaks to his outside, Brad Stewart reaches with both of his arms to attempt to make contact. And that's a no-no. Reaching with both of your arms is going to slow you down, put your momentum towards the sideline, take you off balance, and cause you to lose that half-step or quarter-step you need. Instead, he ought to put his right arm out little crossbody jam, put his right arm out as he's full man turning to run with him, make contact with the left shoulder of the receiver, resetting his momentum. And then when he makes this turn, he would stay on top of that route, even with the receiver. Instead, the reason Brad Stewart's chasing, he reached with both of his arms, just got a little bit of the receiver here that puts him in a trail position. And this is a perfect pass. But if you're Brad, rather than saying, man, that was just a perfect pass, look at your technique and say, was I doing everything I could have done? to make this play an incompletion, can I do anything else to stop this? And if the answer is yes, then get in the film room, get, get out there on the field, do some work, work on your technique, clean it up, get better week to week because he could have done that little extra technique that would have helped him. And again, sometimes you're going to do everything perfect. The teams are still going to complete passes on you and that's fine. In fact, the point of these film reviews is to get to the point to where, hey, let's get every single player playing to a level where their mistakes are minimized, their technique is really sound, and on most plays they're getting everything just about right. That's going to make the margin for error of the offense that much smaller, and that's going to reduce yards per game, points per game, everything else. So work with the players, right? Work with each one. Let's maximize your technique, maximize your skill set, and let's not just say, hey, great pass, great play, nothing I could have done if there was something you could have done. But again, Brad Stewart was right there, but a little technique improvement could have taken this play from completion to incompletion. First and 10, Vanderbilt's going to go fast again. You're going to have Brad Stewart here. You have three Vanderbilt receivers, one that's going to go off of your screen. Florida, again, going to choose to play this way off, way off on the bottom, and then Brad Stewart, who is also quite off the middle. So there's going to be nobody jamming or disrupting any routes. Also, no one to stop the play that teams like to run the most in modern football, which is basically the modified run or an east-west screen. Because Brad Stewart was so far here, he's not making contact with the initial blocker. This is the middle receiver. One of the main reasons that you really want to play aggressive on the middle receiver, again, one, two, and three, let's say, 
is the ball most likely is coming here or here. Very rarely, especially in college, is the outside receiver actually ever going to get the football. So by placing your defender down low, here tight against the middle receiver, that's going to help to deny the screen pass or any short little pass they want to run in here because you have a player in their window. It also helps to disrupt if you want to run a hitch route here on the end or anything of that nature. You're going to have a player that's sitting in this window for quite a while. So I'd much prefer to defend it like that. On this play, Brad Stewart starts here. This receiver slides this way to get this leverage on the block. Brad Stewart comes downhill. The middle receiver, since he has time and space, simply creates a leverage window to where as soon as Brad comes into him, he's going to shepherd him out of the way, which is exactly what happens. Marco Wilson's going to engage here. Again, Marco's well off. It's okay for Marco to be off. The real problem starts with what's happening in here, as we mentioned. Now, because of that, and because Florida wasn't quite ready for the snap again, Sean Davis is still quite a ways off, and he doesn't get touched. Again, that's five yards before he gets touched the first time. Sean Davis comes in, his head's up nicely, then his head is down. Again, you can't tackle looking at the ground. Now, Sean is normally a very dependable tackle. He did not have his best effort out there. We're not going to harp too much on him because he's been a dependent tackler. He does go for the legs, but if he keeps his eyes on his target, that's a tackle. It's not. Stays on his feet. Marco Wilson comes high, tries to strip the ball, doesn't get it. That's a nine-yard gain. Nine-yard gain. Look, this play should never happen. Florida's not ready. Now we're blocked out. We're not in the right position. Here comes Sean Davis. At best for Florida, that's a six-yard gain on first down with a simple east-west screen pass. Not ready for the snap. Not in the proper position. Just not acceptable. Again, this is Vanderbilt running these plays on us. This is not Alabama. Uh, you get a better playmaker, you get better blockers, stronger receivers out there. These plays that are six, seven, eight, nine yards for Vanderbilt are 20, 30, 40, 50 yard touchdowns for other teams. So these mistakes are going to only increase as the stakes increase. We've said on the pod that having Diabate play more, despite the fact that, of course, he does sometimes struggle to shed blocks, would be wise for Florida because he's so much faster than having Miller and Houston out on the field at the same time. Even though he's undersized, Florida could use more speed. And this is what you're going to see on display on this play. Diabate is going to come from his linebacker spot, read this run around the end, and very cleanly get there. But not only does he get there, look, he makes contact before the line of scrimmage and then tackles him for just a one-yard gain. So now that you know it's coming, let's watch it one more time. One more time, Vanderbilt with five on the line. Florida with four linemen. Here's Cox. So we're playing our typical 3-4 defense. Three down linemen. Linebacker there. Here's the play. Cox goes inside a little bit. But again, let's look at what Diabate is doing. Good read. He knows his responsibility as a running back. Good read. He reads this is going outside. Immediately meets. Immediately meets. Running back in the hole. Wraps up. Makes the tackle. Very, very nice play. That's a big upside of Diabate. He's much faster, much faster than either Houston or Miller. That's going to allow him, especially on plays like that, to use his skills to close that down and get a nice stop for Florida. 10-10. to 10. It's third down and seven for Vanderbilt. This game is amazingly deep into the second quarter. Obviously, Florida winds up winning rather handily, but deep into the second quarter, it is 10-10. to 10. And we're going to see something that's not super surprising from Florida on the three receiver side. Sean Davis is going to be way off. Thankfully for us on this play, Vanderbilt's not going to check here because he would have this route if he wants it. He would have this route if he wants it. He's not going to get it. Uh, Florida is going to run a nice blitz. Ventrell Miller is now out of the game. He's in the tent. In comes Josiah Pierre. And he's a three-star, uh, not a super highly recruited guy, but a guy that came in off the bench and played Pretty well in this game. Again, nothing that flashed off the screen and said, wow, this guy's got major upside or ceiling talent, but he played very competently. We're going to bring him on a B-gap blitz. This is a nice blitz designed by Florida. And again, in general, if you see a blitzer, you typically want to throw to the blitzer side. That's normally good football, especially if teams are playing off like Florida does. A lot of times that could be dangerous if teams are trying to rob you, but since Florida almost never does that, you can rest assured that if the blitzer is coming from a certain side, look to that side because Florida will probably be playing soft, which is this side. He does not. He's already looking this way. The blitz is going to get home in time. He can feel it coming. 
Marco Wilson here is covering. And he's going to take his chances, but he's not ready for this to develop yet. And Marco Wilson, in fact, is in good position here as well. So we can watch Marco Wilson's technique on this one. Let's focus here. Watch his technique. Comes across. Again, two hands there. I don't like that. And that is why Marco's trailing. See, early on, Marco's already trailing. Now, you want to fix this problem. You want to fix this problem. One, Marco, and this is, this is, this is unorthodox, by the way. If you, have a, if you have a receiver lined up outside the numbers, my opinion, it's much, much better to force him outside the numbers. The sideline is an extra defender for you. I'd much rather see Marco line up more here, line up here on his right shoulder to the inside of him to make sure that you can't get an inside release on you. Right? I don't think this is what you want to have happen, especially with how Steiner's dropping here. Uh, this should, in my opinion, be a mistake by Marco in general. You'd almost always coach this to make him go to the outside. For whatever reason, Marco does not do that. Secondarily, because he's doing that, he's now going to go again with two hands. You just don't want to go with two hands here. You'd rather go with one. Because Marco's made this interesting, we're just going to now assume instead of trying to steer him outside the numbers, we're purposely going to want him to run inside. We want to funnel him to a safety or to a dropping robber. None of those things are going to happen on this play, but let's assume we are. How would we play this? Same thing, it'd be a crossbody jam in the reverse way. If he's going to run this way, we take our right hand, we put it onto his left shoulder. That way we rotate with him, resetting our momentum. We only need one hand, not two, no reason for two. Why? Because two is going to stall your momentum this way. You're going to lose contact of the receiver this way, and you are going to be trailing. Trailing. Not what you want. You don't have to put yourself in this position. Okay, we're in this position. And now this ball is thrown, and it's not there. But I want to rewind this just one more time. This is, again, a technique point here in football. It's almost always more sound when a receiver is lined up outside the numbers to push him to the boundary. If Marco is instead starting a little more here, so he's on this half of his body, if he wants to run the route he winds up running, he basically can't run it. He's going to wind up taking his first step inside. Marco would have been on top of this route. He would have been able to get a nice jam on him. And this receiver never even gets off. Again, imagine Marco is here. That receiver is just going to keep riding himself out of the play. And there will be nothing there. There will be absolutely nothing there. As it stands, again, he gets separation. There's still going to be nothing here on this hitch. He's not ready for it. Ball's thrown poorly and behind him. Nothing there. Incomplete pass. So, of course, like we said, the purpose of film is to get better. Purpose of film is not to say, man, I'm terrible. Look at this play. It's to get better. Look at the finer point. What could we do next time to improve? And again, on that play, I think that's what could have been done. We've mentioned several times the defensive line actually played a really nice first half. It was the only unit on defense that really did. This is a nice stunt. It's going to be run by Bogle, who played a good game. Bogle is going to slide in here. Carter's going to slide outside. This is going to exhibit all the things you'd want to see a defensive line do. It's important to note this. Because David Turner's unit was not doing this in game one and game two of the season. But with each and every game, they get better and better and better at this. Which means the teaching is working. The unit is understanding what they need to be do doing. And they are doing it. There it is. Stunt. Bogle. Going to come inside. Slide all the way to the A-gap. Going to put pressure on seals. Carter going to slide back out because he's got to replace this. He can't just stay inside for good reason. Let's watch what happens. There's your get pressure. Seals turns out. Here's Carter waiting for him on the outside. This is absolutely textbook perfect defense from the defensive line. And this play winds up being a throwaway. Again, one more time. This is all great work by the defensive line. Here we are. We're just going to wind up sending four. Vanderbilt's going to have three and six defending. This is not an advantageous situation for Florida, but we get a numbers advantage of tight ends going out. So it really becomes just one man down. And that stunt works. Why does the stunt work? Because the running back's going to shuffle outside to protect the C gap rusher. He thinks Bogle's coming off the edge. He doesn't. He's too late to get to the middle, which then causes pressure here. But again, the key to this play is you have to work in pairs when you're going to stunt. Each one of you has to do your job. He's going to come out here and hold the edge. Really disciplined, sound play by Carter in the defensive line. 
That is good football, and it's one of the reasons why Florida's defensive line has been so productive all year. They get the little things right. They work together well, and they're improving every single game. This one was no exception. It's now third and six in the third quarter. Florida's defense did get more productive as the game went on. Was it personnel related? Was it scheme related? Well, on this particular third down, Florida is not going to play as far off. So let's look at our gap differences. We're going to start tighter. We're getting an idea for what Vanderbilt wants. And notice how no one is backing off the ball. Now, why is this? Because we're just playing a straight cover two, right? So what do we do here? We're going to play cover two on this play. It's third down. Let's try cover two. Cover two, cover two. There it is. Again, safety's going to bail. Safety's going to bail. Split the field in half. When you play cover two, that allows all of your underneath defenders to play very aggressive on all of these underneath routes. Despite all of that, Brad Stewart is still going to give too much cushion. Again, this is your first down line. You got to get him before there. Here we go. Brad Stewart's going to back up, back up. This technique is poor, and he slips first down Vanderbilt. So let's watch this again. I can't say this enough times. We have to defend the slant route. All right? Now, you have help over the top. You can play inside leverage. Why? Because you do not have help in the middle of the field. You cannot get beat on a post route. That's a no-no. You have to make sure that you route this route to your safety, who is taking half of the field, but you have no help here. So if you're Brad Stewart, you line up inside. Check. He's inside. We can see that, right? The straight line is on the inside. Check. Okay, you get a check for that, Brad. Now, as the play moves along, okay, I'm not sure what kind of technique we're using here with this back pedal. We got to clean that up, Brad. But more importantly, again, you got to stop the quick game, right? You have to stop the quick game. If we see this receiver coming down, if, the, if we're going to play off-man technique, we're doing so so we can break hard on these routes. We want to break hard. You've been in the program for a long time, Brad. Damn. We want to break hard. Instead, you can't break hard if you're still coming out of a back pedal when he makes his move. You just can't do it. Now you slip. Now again, you would have almost been there, but if you want to make this play, if this play wants to be made... You can make it. You're here. You're ready for this. Let's make this play happen. Okay? Don't don't gallop backwards. What is this? Do not gallop backwards. Take a small back pedal. Take a small back pedal. Let's not be jumping backwards. There's no need. Stay balanced on your feet. And right now, again, it's third and six. Know your situation. It's third and six. Right now, if this receiver is running a post, he's going to have to get going. He does not have all day. Doesn't have all day to set that post up. Florida's D-line been playing well. Does not have all day. Okay? So if Brad Stewart instead... Right? Look at his body position here. You can see, again, he's almost in the air. He's in the air right here. He's jumping backwards. Right? This should be a little back pedal. And as soon as he's going to see this, foot's in the ground, Brad comes downhill, this play is dead. Foot's in the ground. Get there. He's backing up. Look, he left the circle. Right? We lost him. And he slips. It's a little things, but it's third down and six. What kind of route are they running? What kind of route do they like to run? They've been picking on me all day long. Let's deny this route. Instead, it's another first down for Vanderbilt. So we do get some slightly different personnel as this game goes on for Florida, but nothing that was super major. We still have Steiner at safety. We do have Jaden Hill now down at corner. At the top of your screen, you can't see a receiver. And Marco Wilson up here. Receiver's going to run a hitch and basically engage Marco. He's not part of the play. He's just clearing the way for the route they really want. Florida Florida is going to do a couple of things here that are confusing to me. So one, as we've highlighted before, again, on previous film studies, if you're going to put your nickel here, in this case, this is Brad Stewart, you're telling the offense that I wanted him to help on a run or also play pass. So again, this is a conflict defender. He has a choice to make. He has the hardest choice to make. He's reading what's going to happen, and he is giving you this extra protection because, as you can see right now, Florida has one player lined up on the center. However, he's still more on the strong side, and only one player on the weak side versus two blockers. So if we just move Brad Stewart out here, that's going to give them a two-on-one. And Florida's linebacker here, this is Josiah Pierre, he's also lined up over the center. It will be tough for him to cover this much ground so you're going to have an extra defender come here to equalize these numbers two on two to slow the play down 
so that your linebacker would be able to come to the weak side and help out. So that's what's going on pre-snap. What's happening post-snap is a little confusing. So one on the bottom of our screen, Jaden Hill again is taking a receiver outside the numbers, yet he's purposely playing outside leverage to push him inside. There are reasons why you might do this. Again, it's very unusual, but you could do it. There are times to do it. Very unusual, however, typically to do this. But nice work by Jaden here. This is going to be a crossbody jam. This is his left arm. His right arm is by his side. His left arm is going to contact the right shoulder of the receiver, and he's going to turn and run with him. He's going to stay on top of that route rather nicely. What's confusing about this side of the field is Steiner is peering in as though he's on run support, but he's not just charging in. So if Steiner was instead just charging in, that would tell us we were going to bring our strong safety into the box no matter what happened. He was going to come down here and play aggressively and then eventually cover the running back if he goes out for a route or a flat. Instead, Steiner on the bottom of your screen here is just, I don't really know what Steiner's doing. It's not a handoff. You know, the running back does not have the ball. He's coming downhill anyway. Jaden, by playing outside leverage and pushing the receiver to the inside, would typically be indicating that he feels like he has safety help. But again, doesn't look like that's the case. So this is stuff that's confusing on film. What's going on here? I don't actually know. I can't tell you what Florida's doing on this side because Steiner's really doing a whole lot of nothing. But now let's look where the play goes on the top side and try to explain this. Here's our conflict defender. There's Brad Stewart. Ball is snapped. He's only playing run support. So what that tells us is he was coming in to play run support no matter what. He's not waiting to make a read. He's just coming in to play run support, which is going to leave. Going to leave Vanderbilt's receiver one-on-one -on -one against Sean Davis. Here's Sean, and he can run whatever route he wants. Now, again, I'm going to ask you as you're watching this video, what route is Sean Davis covering? Look, it's first and 10. What route is Sean Davis covering? What, what is he doing? What is his job? Sean, write me, DM me. Let me know what you're covering here. Because if you're going to start 12 yards off the ball and you're going to let a receiver run a post route and he's here and you're still four yards behind him, what route are you covering? What are, what are you doing? Look at this. What, what is happening here? You're not protecting against anything if you're covering no one. At some point in time, you have to cover somebody. Right? You're not just a bailing safety forever. You're not a bailing corner forever. Uh, I don't understand what the methodology is here. And now Sean, again, unlucky. This is unlucky. He's here. He goes low. He wants to wrap. That's unfortunate. That's perfectly fine tackling technique. He probably should have waited a half step more to break down and tackle him, but he is a good tackler. He had a bad game. We're not going to ride him too hardly, but I just don't understand this. Again, yes. You know what? You're going to send... Your nickel in here on run support. And if they run a little play action, which they do, you have to cover something. I mean, I'm much more in favor of having them beat you over the top. Make it hard for them. Contact them early. Sean's a good cover guy. This kind of stuff is crazy. I mean, look at this. He has time to catch this ball, spray some rubberized pellets up for good measure, turn, thinking he's going to get hit, which is why he's protecting the ball. Look, I'm going to get hit, protect. Oh, I'm not going to get hit. I'll turn, not get tackled. Steiner, who's so far underneath this play, because we don't know what he was doing with a running back who didn't get the ball, no one can know, is now not in position to catch him. And then he does, and then he goes again. What? What is this? What kind of tackle is this? Tackle him here. Tackle him here. What? What are we doing here? What's happening with this? What kind of tackling? How much football has Donovan Steiner played? That's the tackle that you go for? Touchdown. There's no other way to say this. When you're watching this on film, again, the film never lies. Nickel comes into run support. It's not there. We allow a completely free release slant route 15 yards down the field. Right? This is really a post route. Now, why am I calling it a slant? Because if you offer no resistance, you might as well run a slant route. That might as well be an extended slant route because it's that easy of a throw to make. Right on time, on the money. Sean Davis misses the tackle. Steiner will behind the play catches up, at least tackle him. Vanderbilt didn't score in the red zone last time. We go way high. No idea why. Touchdown, Vanderbilt.
this stuff has got to stop and it's just not gonna stop and again a lot of ugly stuff on film this stuff's not pretty all of it's correctable a lot of it just has to do with the mentality and scheme and then cleaning up some issues with who's playing what the personnel is and how we're tackling again i'd be rolling this stuff in the film room all week long i have no doubt that every single one of these florida players wants to do what's best for the program they want to become the best players they can be and so far on film, it's just not happening. That's where you got to say, look, your film is not indicative of however good you think you are or how good you think you're playing. Because right now, again, the film is just ugly. It is what it is. Florida up 31-17. It's the fourth quarter. And the star of our film session last time, a guy who flipped tremendous upside or showed tremendous upside in the game against Arkansas is going to get a lot of love on the podcast and this film review. Why? Because he flashes on film. Take a look here from the mic position. Handoff, makes the read, fills the gap, stick down. Look at him. We talked about this last time. Techniques and tactical skills that are repeatable. Are your skills repeatable? We said, hey, you know what? Look at how this guy tackles. Hopper, he's going to keep making tackles. Why? Because it's not a fluke. When your technique is good, the results will follow. Excellent tackle, fill the hole, get a stop. Second down and seven, and now we're going to see a run play the teams have used against Florida quite frequently all year long. Weak side of the field. Uh, really, this is more of a neutral side of the field, right? Two blockers here, three here, and a receiver. Then two up top, so we have a symmetrical formation. Running back behind, could go left, could go right. Florida is going to have three here, three here, one here, and one here. So it looks like we're symmetrical because technically we are. The problem is you're going to waste a player, right? You're going to waste a player. One of these safeties is going to be wasted. This is one of the big benefits of why you bring one down into the formation. So if it's me, I'm going to put my linebacker here. I'm going to slide Hopper to the middle. I'm going to bring Trey Dean right here. I'm going to wind up playing what looks to be and you can run a 3-4 this way, but it looks to be more of a 3-4 look up front. And again, you can run this with a 3-4. It's, it's all the same. But you're going to have four guys on the line of scrimmage, three behind, covering all your gaps. Bring Jaden Hill down here. Trust him in this matchup. Have Torrance here and playing safety. Trust yourself here. Right? Why? Because again, make Vanderbilt beat you with your athletes. Cover. Instead, by trying to play a little more conservative and playing a little bit of both, you allow yourself to have these kind of run plays to happen to you. This is a well-designed run play. So Florida's right tackle. We're going to come. We're going to double Slayton here, but just for a second. That's going to allow the left guard to pull across, get a block here. Tight end's going to come through the hole and get a block here. And watch where this action happens. There's your left guard getting a block. Now we're going to release. This is the beauty of this play. So we're two on one in Slayton, one of Florida's best and biggest, strongest interior linemen only for enough time to let this develop. Now again, watch how well this is done by Vanderbilt. Now we're gonna get Hopper who sees, he sees the running back, he's got eyes on him. We're gonna take Hopper out, there it is. Tight end comes through, we're gonna block here and we're good. And I'll take a look, Jaden Hill, who should be our only wasted player, which would be fine, he was a corner, shouldn't be wasted because Jaden Hill should be covering this receiver who is now blocking Trey Dean Trey Dean should have already been in the box, in which case we have all the right numbers and we are plus one. We're plus one on the rushing attack. Instead, because we try to play a little of both, which Florida frequently tries to do, we are not plus one on the rushing attack. We didn't know which way they were going. Look how nice that hole is they've created. Now, again, for Florida, we're making this tough on ourselves, right? They have the right numbers to block, hack on hat football. Should we shed blocks here? Yes, we should. Now, Torrance is late because Torrance was backpedaling. Torrance was your free safety. He was going to help deep. He's not really the problem on this play. He's a primary pass defender first, then a run stopper. Trey Dean was your primary run stopper. He's basically taken out of the play by his starting position. Not ready for that run to the, to the play side of the field. Now, in comes Torrance, takes a bad angle, and misses a tackle. This is already a nine-yard gain. Right, so we've already sorry, we've already a uh, seven-yard gain for a first down. So he's already got the first down. Now he's just going to get bonus yards. But again, all of this occurs because of how Florida chooses to align. They choose to align themselves very. This is very passive. 
very passive. Now, why is he here? Because you have a play eligible tight end that you're worried about potentially running a route. But again, if you line up Trey Dean there, shift, 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 he can still cover this tight end running a route. There's no leverage loss there. Instead, he starts himself in a position where I don't know really, again, what Trey Dean is accomplishing by being here. He's not going to drop back. He's too far away from the line of scrimmage. He can't fill a gap fast enough. We can't slide our linebackers over fast enough. All he's going to do is come here and get blocked, and that waste the player here in Jaden Hill is not even part of the play. So again, you see this happen, I think, far too often with Florida. You see teams consistently taking advantage of the weak side of the offensive line. Uh, we've showed it many times on this very film breakdown. It's something to look for in following weeks. Is again, teams are definitely keen on those looks from Florida when they get that kind of opportunity. All right, first down to 10. Jaden Hill here, empty side. Hopper here. Torrance now in the box. One, two, three. Now we're being much more aggressive. We're expecting a run on this particular play. I like this lineup by Florida. We just showed you earlier. Wouldn't it be great if Florida had three potential linebackers here filling? And although Jaden Hill is not a linebacker, take a look at our alignment now. Essentially, Florida against the run is an edge defender with Jaden Hill, which is typically what you'd want your corners to do. Then you're going to have Dean fill the the B gap, and then you're going to have Hopper fill either A gap or B gap as a support defender. And on the outside here, you have another linebacker. This is a very strong run-oriented defense. We've talked about before that Florida does well if we line up correctly in, in um, favorable situations that will help us versus the offense. Hopper, as he does really well, makes a great read, and then bam, stick. Again, look at this tackle. Stick. Nowhere. Gone down like glue just erased excellent play yet again in this game two for two uh in in good games on film for tyron hopper now here is a good time to bring a corner blitz a good time to bring a corner blitz take a look at the alignment here we're going to motion across motion across trey dean again is a much more strong safety run oriented stopping safety is going to come down low we're going to play high off the strong side of the field here because, because there is no eligible receiver on Jaden Hill's side, send him in to put pressure on this backside. I like this call. This is an aggressive call. Of course, we have Hopper here in the middle of the field. Vanderbilt is going to run a play fake. Here comes Jaden Hill quickly, aggressively, decisively making this decision. Because he comes, he is going to ruin this play. He's here first. Now here's Bogle. Now, Hopper, as you can see here, is going to disappear off your screen, but I want to show you one of the reasons why Hopper is special. Bogle's got him tackled. Look who comes flying into your screen in a second. You're going to see him like a missile coming in to get a hit here. Boom. One more time. Look at this. Boom. Again, Hopper was off of your screen. Comes flying downhill to finish this play. That's what you want to see linebackers doing. This is a great play by Florida. Here is, of course, Florida's five-star Griffin Dexter. Got a lot of action in the game as well. But excellent play, excellent work. Again, if Florida puts themselves into a good look, they are often successful. It's just that we're not often in a good look. Third and 19, Florida dodges a bullet on this play that you cannot see on television. But you're going to have a straight go route here from the seam that's actually going to go completely uncovered. Both Torrance, both Torrance and Brad Stewart are going to slide here to cover the, the middle receiver in a three by one set. One here, there's three there, running back here. Uh, and that's gonna be a touchdown, but Seals is only gonna look here. Again, he's a freshman quarterback, playing actually quite well, like we highlighted last week and this week. He played a nice game. He's a very capable quarterback. I like what I see from him in general, especially for a Vanderbilt team in the future. But on this play, he's only gonna stare his receiver down on the left side of this, and we're gonna try to show you, although you can't see it, what happens. Bogle's going to be your dropper. Florida's going to go into what should have been on this side of the field, what functions as a cover three. Again, it's impossible to tell what defense Florida actually winds in up, uh, up in this play because over here we get just a busted coverage, and that's going to kind of change what this would have been, but that's not our concern. Just know this route is a touchdown. It's completely uncovered, and he's wide open. It doesn't even matter that Seals is looking over here. It's not that there was a free safety that slid down this way. There's just no one there. If he happens to turn his head and look here, that is, in fact, a touchdown. It's 31-24 instead of 31-17 late in the fourth quarter. That's how close this game was. 
It's also third and 19. So how are you letting a straight go route from the interior receiver go for a touchdown? I don't know, but we did, and we dodged a bullet. But again, Seals instead is going to just stare his receiver down here. Take a look at how many times he kind of pumps this ball. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's padding, he's waiting, he's waiting. He's just waiting to sling this. Good protection by Vanderbilt. He does have a really strong arm. He fits this in. It is third and 19, so good job by Jaden Hill at stopping this just short. Your job is to stop that short. Again, does he do it? No. But had this pass been thrown here, it would have been incomplete. Would I like to have seen Jaden been closer? Yes. One of the reasons he's not is his underneath defender, Bogle, sort of left him to dry. Now, this was a deep drop for Bogle, but it doesn't matter. Once you're dropping into zone as a defender, you have to keep dropping to make contact with this window point. Now, this is one of the games you'd love to have in all 22 for, as most of these have been off the screen. You're going to get just a glimpse of this here in a second on the TV replay. Just a glimpse. All right, so Bogle had dropped like this, as he should have. He saw the receiver running his route. He was looking at him. And then he sort of just kind of let him go. There's no reason for it. He lets him go. As in letting him go, as in he he's, was never contacting him, but he recognizes he's running deeper than Bogle's going to go. He's not running an underneath route or something else. But then Bogle turns himself around. That's why you're seeing him now face this side of the field. There's no reason for that. He should have stayed on his drop and just kept getting depth. Again, his job is to be underneath this throw that's about to happen here off your screen. Now, you can't see the receiver. He's off your screen here next to Jaden, but he is, in fact, there. There's the ball. Now, again, had Bogle just stayed on his drop line, he might be in line for an interception. But he dropped, he dropped, he dropped. Then he turned and flattened himself out like you just saw and then had to turn back around. So no reason for that from Bogle. A good chance for him to clean this up. Jaden Hill then comes downhill. So again, if this is done correctly, there's only one receiver here. He's going to run this comeback. Bogle drops off the line. He keeps his eyes here. He gets in this window. This throw should be going over Bogle's head, which is a much harder throw, which would also give Jaden Hill more time to come downhill to knock this down. As it stands, Seals is able to pump, 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 and throw basically a straight line pass to this deep comeback out, which he has that arm strength for, and he gets it in there. All in all, a nice play by Vanderbilt. Florida has the right idea here in this zone. Uh, doesn't execute it correctly. Vanderbilt gets enough time when they drop eight, and they almost convert this for a first down on third down and 19, which is obviously not good. Now, because of that big third down completion, they get a chance to go for it on fourth and three in a football game that they are still in. Football game that they are still in. At the top of your screen, you cannot see what's going to happen. Unfortunately, that's where he's going to go. And this is Tyron Hopper who is somehow matched up all the way on the edge with Vanderbilt's tight end one-on-one. -on -one. He obviously is giving him way too much cushion. Again, here we go. Can't see it, can't see it. Just a lot of cushion there. Easy slant route. He has safety help here. You'd much rather see him, again, much rather see him get more aggressive on this play, especially with a safety over the top, especially with a guy who's not going to run away from anybody. No idea why he's this soft. No idea if he's being told to be this soft. Most likely he is because look how soft everyone else is. Again, look how soft everyone else is, right? This route's also here. Look at this route. That's an, e that's an easy throw. That route's there. He's not going to make a play on that. There's no way he's there in time. So he has two different routes to go. He picks his pre-snap matchup, which he knows he likes. Again, it's fourth down and three. Take this in. It's fourth down and three. One safety. Two safeties. Why? Why are we playing so soft? Take a safety off the board, put another defender in there that can jump underneath one of these slant routes. Be more aggressive, taking away what teams want to do first. Let them try to make a hero play with a slant and go or a post route or something else. Don't just give them what they want. This is a good example of just how natural and instinctual Hopper is. Here's Hopper along with Josiah Pierre. Watch how much faster Hopper is going to get to this ball. They're both going to read this at the same time. Right? Look, he's already a step ahead of him, but look how much faster he gets to the hole. Boom. Pierre is still planning his move. Meanwhile, Hopper's already making the tackle. 
wrapped up, and once he gets his hands on you, right, you're not going far. So again, one more time. Your sopper. Read, handoff, committed into the hole, stick. That's good stuff. I mean, this guy is showing good, good stuff on film. Each week we talk about how much we prefer Florida to bring A and B gap pressures right up the gut, especially against inexperienced quarterbacks. It's just much more for them to deal with, uh, given that teams like this like to throw slant routes. If you bring pressure up the middle that gets in that slant window, it also makes the quarterback tend to want to back up and duck away. And when you're sending Hopper, it's even better because Hopper is a missile. Check out this A-gap blitz right here. Here he comes, flying past the center, nailing seals. Florida almost getting a turnover here. This play is going to wind up not counting for anything, but all that matters for us is, again, watch Hopper time this. Look at him time this. This guy has not gotten a lot of reps. I mean, this is just incredible feel for this. I mean, he times that perfectly shoots right through before the center can do anything about it and is on the quarterback who's backpedaling who wants to throw by the way look at this coverage by the way excellent coverage here by Jaden Hill this is how you cover a slant route do you see this that's perfect 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 coverage there is just nothing here right but Hopper comes flying through the gap beats the center hits the quarterback Great play, again, by Hopper. We've talked before about how we prefer to run A and B gap blitzes. It's much harder for quarterbacks of really any level of experience to, to deal with, especially when they want to wind up running slant routes or in-breaking routes uh, here like this, which is what they're going to wind up running on this play. Uh, but regardless, it's going to put someone in their window. This is Hopper. Hopper's going to come right here through the A gap next to the center and put tremendous pressure on Seals. Look at him here. Watch him time this snap count. He's coming in full speed. Perfect timing. Blows past the center. Gets in. Hits seals. Great coverage here by, by Jaden Hill. Take a look at that. He's absolutely gloving that receiver on this short dig route, short slant route. And this winds up being a play that's inconsequential because of a flag. But for our purposes, Hopper showing what he's been showing on film. This is a guy who needs to get more playing time in more meaningful situations Florida has just a couple of games left before they play Alabama. And when you see guys flashing on film like this, you need to give them a chance to do this in a bigger stage. These are the playmakers you're looking for. Now, this guy's just been fantastic. He's flashing all over the film as a high-level SEC linebacker. This is going to be a play that Florida covers really well on. We've talked before about Torrance at safety playing really good off-man technique. He's probably our best off-man technique cover guy so far from what we've seen. Of course, not all of our defenders are playing off-man all the time or even off-zone, but he is very good at it. We highlighted that on a previous film study before, of course, our YouTube channel got yanked. Uh, so unfortunately, you can't see that. So we'll show it to you here in a little bit of a microcosm. What you're going to get from Vanderbilt is a little flat flare, really just a pop route to the back. And then you're going to get a go route on the outside, which is going to be perfectly handled by Jaden, who's going to cross body jam and run with him, erasing him out of the play. Jaden Hill continues to play very, very well on defense. Uh, should, get, he should see much more reps than he's seeing. He needs to be on the field. And then Torrance is going to get a post route, or sorry, a corner route rather, here that he's going to wind up breaking perfectly with. Now, you're not going to get to see this on your screen, especially Jaden, they're gonna zoom in. They wanna show you the quarterback rolling out. He's looking here first at Brad Stewart, which is really just a sell to try to hit a deep pass. And then here comes this corner route, which again, you can't see. And it's not really even a true corner. You can't see what's happening here. Uh, but this pass goes to nobody. Torrance is perfectly on top of this route, which I think is one of the reasons why this happens is he's snapping here. Torrance was coming out of his back pedal, coming down to collapse on this route. He breaks off to then go pick this pass off. So he's completely right on top of that route. Jaden Hill, as you see here, looks like he lost contain on his man. He did not. He was glued to him on the sideline until I saw the ball thrown. This is really good defense. Again, Seals rolls out, doesn't have Jaden. He first looks at Jaden, doesn't like that go route. Now he's going to turn. Okay, fine. I'll check my corner route because Jaden's glued up. And again, this isn't really a true corner route. I'm calling it a corner. Uh, really, it's just a very 
let's call it like a really short little corner, but it's really just a little bit of a of an outbreaking vertical route to give him a window here on an off man, off man look. Torrance is completely on top of this, almost gets himself a pick, but that is good defense and that is good coverage. On second and 19, that is how you play it. He didn't just keep backpedaling until he was in the end zone to give him this completion. As soon as he saw the route snap to the outside, he came downhill on it, and that's what caused the bad throw. Third and four, Florida's up 38-17. The game is in hand at this point in time, but Florida's still having issues getting lined up correctly. Here you're going to see Trey Dean not get there in time. In fact, Florida only has one defender here, and it's my boy Chester Kimbrough. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt has three receivers. So Florida with... Just one defender there. Dean gets over there in time. The play is not going there because, you guessed it, they're going to throw a slant route. Now, we've also shown on previous film videos that Trevez, just so far, is not up to snuff at the star. Uh, from what he's put on film, he definitely should not be there. Getting reps at this point in the game, I suppose, is fine. Uh, if it were up to me, I'd still be having Chester Kimborough play the star, even though he's undersized. He's just one of our best pure cover guys. And I think he can cover both ways. He doesn't just need to have the boundary or the sideline to help him. Uh, Trevez so far has had a really hard time covering on this play here. Again, well-schooled by Vanderbilt. He goes right to his matchup. Who is playing the star for Florida? That's my matchup. It's third down. I don't care that I've given you three on two up here. Because I would much rather take my matchup against Florida's nickel or star even over a three on two. So Florida's not lined up correctly, doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and just take the easiest little slant route you've ever seen and convert this for a first down. Then Chester Kimbrough is going to wind up coming in and helping this play out here, which of course you saw on TV, ground caused a fumble. Uh, but that's just too easy, right? Too easy. Third and four, too simple. Again, this is a different unit, different players. So if you're thinking, hey, let's just get different players in the game, they're going to solve the problem. Not all players are created equal. Again, Florida has some guys I think that should be playing. I do think the personnel should obviously be different. But to me, when you start seeing consistent issues across the board, whether it's recruiting or coaching, things are not just magically getting better, especially not with every single guy Florida marches out there. And we'll end on a bright spot, which is going to be the interception from Elam. This is going to be excellent coverage from Elam. He is at the top of your screen, top of your screen here. Florida is going to play single high safety, which you can't see anymore. That's why Elam is allowing this route to come to the inside. One more time, let's start this off. We're going to get Torrance here. He's going to drop back into the single high. He knows he has help to the inside. We are not outside the numbers. We are inside the numbers. Here's your numbers inside, which means that you do, in fact, want to funnel this receiver to the inside to your help. So if Elam does everything correctly, he'll maintain outside leverage, which he does. Maintains outside. Again, I'd like to see him get this left arm contacted here. That's just a little technique issue, but he's here now. He's here. He's got the outside covered. This is what you want. He's got this part of the field covered. Here's his help rotating in here, which is going to stop a post route, which they're not running. They're trying to run just a tight little inside released go. This throw has to be very precise to be the dropping safety and a talented corner like Elam. The throw is not going to be precise enough. Elam, because he's in good position, is able to turn his head back, read the ball. Gives him a nice little professional shove. Eh, just give me a little space right there. Thank you. And I'll take that interception. Now, this is different from what we saw Marco Wilson do earlier. Notice Elam has his head on the ball, and he's going to be the aggressive one, right? Little shove out of the way. This is my ball. I'm going to make sure I can make this play before you. He's up in the air first. He takes the ball. Nice interception. Nice play there by Florida. And he's going to wind up getting a little celebration penalty here, which I thought was perhaps a little ridiculous. I'm not really sure why that gets one. Him and Chester there. You know, let's go. Get it going. Uh, as for Florida, nice interception there by Elam. Good technique. Good play. So there were some bright spots in this game from Florida's defense. However, still not schemes, still not personnel usage, still plenty of problems that do not seem to be getting cleaned up week in and week out. As always, hope you enjoyed this film breakdown, and I'll see you next time.